Thank you. Uh, yes, this is uh, part uh, of a joint work with my supervisor, Miguel. And okay. this is the program. I will just give a few information about the TT bar deformation. Uh, Stefan already said almost everything. I will just introduce this in the case of uh, young meats. So then I'll pass to the description of this uh, two dimensional gauge theory. And then I will analyze the new results, especially the, the phase transitions of the theory. And we analyze uh, how instantons contribute to the partition functions. And yeah, we will conclude the summary and results. OK. Uh, we can start. So yeah, uh, this is uh, titty bar deformation has received a lot of interest, at, uh, of interest in recent years. Uh, this operator has been introduced in 2004 by Zamologikov, but only after those uh, two papers in 2016, uh, the, this, the deformation of conformal field theories has uh, received much more interest. And a lot of papers are coming out still this week, for example, about the topic. So uh, it has a nice geometric interpretation from my point of view, because on one hand, it is equivalent to an undeformed theory coupled to the Jacquet Teitelbaum gravity. And OK, the alternative geometric interpretation is that uh, TT bar uh, deformation of the theory is equivalent to a, a field dependent local uh, change of coordinates or a random change of coordinates from the point of view of Cardi. But yeah, uh, I'm lucky because I come after Stefano, so you know all the details, and I won't say much about that. And I just want to mention a few uh, research lines which are being uh, developed nowadays. And mostly, I will talk about those related to gauge and field theories. So uh, for example, there are a lot of work on these ADS-CFT correspondence, which is uh, appearing everywhere in uh, gauge theories. And I think it has been started by a series of papers by Givion and uh, collaborators. And so on one hand, they're trying to push the this TT bar deformation of, of the boundary CFT into the bulk of ADS-3. Or on the other hand, trying to understand what geometric deformation of ADS-3 could correspond to a, to a TT bar deformation on the boundary. So they, they want to try to understand both, both sides of the duality. Uh, also, uh, some papers have appeared uh, trying to understand uh, TT bar deformation in a, a superconformal field theory. And it has been done for many different theories. And uh, they've uh, discovered that this uh, TT bar operator can be uh, plugged into a um, uh, super multiplet. So essentially, uh, this, there is a more general deformation of this uh, supersymmetric field theory. Uh, and yeah, they, it's, uh, I think it's interesting because they are doing uh, physics in the infrared, which is usually not very easy in the superconformal field theories. Uh, also, there are some uh, attempts to this higher uh, charge uh, TT bar deformations. Uh, Stefano talked about that a little. And yeah, there are these works by um, Conti, Negro, and Tateo, and other papers by uh, Lefloc, MSA. Uh, also, there is some interest in trying to understand how this the deformation by the TT bar operator uh, affects the entanglement entropy and okay, a lot of other words. So okay, I will not really uh, talk about any of those topics, and instead uh, I will focus on a result uh, contained in this paper by Contianella, Negro, and Tateo, and and try to develop and uh, use this result for the case of uh, gauge theory. So yeah, uh, we already talked about that. And uh, we can, if we start with a free bosonic Lagrangian without the TT bar deformation, and we plug in this, uh, this irrelevant deformation, uh, we turn on this parameter, and one uh, founds the Born-Infeld model, or uh, the bosonic uh, Nambugoto uh, model in a, a specific choice of gauge. OK, I'm using here this parameter tau, which I think is minus alpha of the Stefano's talk. So there is this uh, slight difference. OK, uh, but in this paper, they uh, noticed that if we start uh, an interaction in Lagrangian, we, uh, we can, of course, put a, a potential, which is, does not contain derivatives, and, but includes the interaction. And we can find a general expression for the uh, TT bar deformed Lagrangian. This is a bit of a complicated expression, but it's completely explicit, and we can use it. Uh, they also uh, developed the same uh, theory for uh, the Maxwell theory, so the abelian uh, yang theory on Riemann surfaces. And 
they found the explicit formula for the deformant, the formula Grangian, and it's a bit complicated, or a bit cumbersome formula, but uh, the nice thing is that the Hamiltonian has a really uh, simple uh, transformation. So we start with the undeformed uh, theory, and the deformed theory uh, with the strength of deformation uh, measured by this parameter tau is uh, given by this, uh, this formula. Okay, we will just have to be careful here because we see we have a singularity, so we, we would, while studying the theory, we have uh, to, to have a check every time as to what values of the parameter tau make sense, the theory at all. Okay, then uh, they propose the same formula for the non-abelian uh, young means theory. Uh, and okay, it is not derived by first principles, but it satisfies all the constraints, so it, should, uh, it is the real uh, TT bar deformation of the theory. Okay, so here I finish the discussion about the TT bar. And okay, we see here the, where the singularity is, now we pass to the quantum field theory part. And I'll give a brief introduction about this two dimensional Young Mills theory. Uh, this has been studied a lot in the early 90s, uh, so it's more than 20 years ago, but uh, apparently also a paper appeared this morning about this topic, so it's still under uh, investigation. Okay, the, actually the formula, uh, this formula was obtained by Migdal in the 75 for SUN, and uh, he obtains that the partition functions, uh, partition functions given by this uh, formula, so we start with a path integral, but in the end, we arrive with a very uh, simple formula, and here the, the, the dimension of the of the represent. Okay, the sum runs over R, runs over uh, isomorphism, isomorphism classes of irreducible representations of the gauge group. So S U N in this case, uh, dim R is the dimension. Uh, we can give it by the the hook content formula. So well, I wrote it in a minute. I'll first give, okay, C2 is the, is the Casimir, uh, the G is the young mill couplings, and A is a parameter which can be identified, uh, identified with the area of the Riemann surface. Okay, we know that irreducible representations of SUN can be uh, labeled by uh, partitions of N. So if we have a partition, we, we, have, we have this partition, say R1, Rn, so we have this formula, so we can write the dimension of the representation by the hook content formula, And we have also the Casimir, which is again written in terms of this partition. Okay, so we have uh, explicit formulae for this uh, for this object. But uh, however, uh, okay. The customer is not really that, but uh, the fact is that we are not interested in the SUN theory, but in the UN theory. And actually, the, the same procedure uh, can be done, and we can obtain uh, UN representations from those of SUN, and we can use this uh, relation. We have So UN is a semi-direct product of SN and UN, so we can build UN representations from those of SUN and those of uh, U1. So again, we have this formula for the UN theory. But now, of course, we have to include this uh, U1 representation, so now the partition is not uh, positive and we have just disordering, but uh, we can have all span from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, uh, when we are considering our uh, young mean theory on a closed uh, Riemann surface of genus G, 
And from, there is a result of Witten in 92, so he proved that the theory localizes onto uh, flat connections. So this is a quantum field theory, but the result is uh, semi-classical in the sense we, that we only uh, have contributions from the uh, solution to the classical Young-Mills equation. And so we can, we can write the, um, the formula we have well, we can write it as, uh, an is, in an instanton expansion, so a sum over instanton contributions. Uh, another uh, aspect which provides the same uh, result is the abelianization uh, procedure described by Blau and Thompson in 93. And, okay, maybe the original uh, action, the uh, young meat action is, uh, is a standard action, we can write it this way. Okay, here uh, F is the field strength, as usual. But uh, since we are in two dimensions, we can replace this action by this other. Uh, should be, sorry. Okay, here uh, phi is a background field, so we can recover the, the previous action immediately by Gaussian integration of the field uh, phi. And here, the mu is a volume form. And okay, so this is uh, from Gaussian integration, we recovered the first one, so those are equivalent. But then uh, Blau and Thompson uh, proved that this uh, phi uh, can be, uh, is constant, so we can bring it out of the integral. So uh, we can we use uh, gauge invariance to diagonalize the F, and this provides the abelianization procedure. And okay, also we can see here why we get the in the previous formula. We have this a g squared hem over half. We comes from here because this gives the area of the of this of the Riemann surface, and you have this coupling here. Okay. Uh, this theory is also equivalent to uh, quantum mechanics on the gauge uh, group manifold. So uh, in, in this description, we have that the Hamiltonian of the theory is the Casimir operator, and we know that the Casimir is diagonal in the representation basis. And this is uh, developed by, uh, by Douglas, but uh, there is also a nice extension in the review by Kors, Moore, and Rangolan in 93-94. Okay. So uh, we are up to the final formula for the TT bar deformation of the theory, which is given by this, uh, this replacement. We have said that the Hamiltonian is indeed the Casimir, so we have this, this formula. Okay, but uh, we are not interested in uh, the theory on an arbitrary Riemann surface of genus G, and instead we are interested in, in the case of the sphere, because it has some further properties. So uh, if we look at the mid formula and set H equal to zero, we we recall that we have the dimension square. So uh, after a change of variables here, we obtain the usual uh, van der Monde measure. And so this is uh, actually a matrix model, which has uh, nice, interesting thing, uh, properties. And w the properties uh, I will mainly focus on uh, throughout this, uh, this presentation are the, the presence of a phase transition at large n, which was uh, proved by Douglas and Kazakov in 93. And uh, a few months later, uh, Gross and Matheson uh, demonstrated that this phase transition is indeed uh, uh, triggered by the presence of instantons. So uh, also the, the instanton uh, expansion given by uh, Witten was uh, very important and plays a, a central role in this uh, procedure. Okay, so now I will uh, start with the description of this, of the TT bar deformation of the standard theory and uh, and prove it, the fact that it still undergoes a phase transition. Okay, so we take the, the case h equals zero in the previous formula by Migdal and uh, plug in the, the TT bar deformed uh, Hamiltonian. So we have this expression and we want to change variables. And we define a new variable h So 
So it's just a shift. Sorry. And, but we are interested in the large end limits. So the, um, we obtain a matrix model, and we want that the rank of this uh, matrix model to be large. So uh, we take the uh, so-called Toft limit, so it's a double scale limit. Uh, so we send n to infinity and uh, the coupling to zero, uh, giving, uh, maintaining their product uh, fixed. OK, so we call all this, uh, this part, which is fixed in the large n, A. And so it's just a rescaling of the area of the Riemann surface. OK. Uh, but since this uh, is a large n limit, we are not focusing on these variables, but instead on their behavior at large n. So we define a function. Goes like that, like that, and okay. This uh, all these quantities become uh, huge, and in the when n goes to infinity, and so the leading contribution to the partition functions come from the uh, Sutter point configurations. Okay, so uh, after this change of variable, we, we are in a suitable uh, framework. So we just follow the standard uh, techniques of this uh, large n uh, analysis of matrix models. So we introduce the eigenvalue density for this variable h and call it a row of H. It's the, it's the density of eigenvalues of the matrix model when the rank becomes large. So uh, we now uh, have this uh, Sutter point equation, which, uh, and the solution to these equations provide the, the leading contribution uh, to, the, um, to the partition functions. So OK, we expanded the, the form of Casimir in geometric series and, the, and took the derivative. So we have this, this expression. So in particular, we have uh, an infinite series of contribution as powers of, uh, of the deformation parameter tau. Uh, but this, uh, this other point equation in the limit uh, tau equals 0, so in the underform limit, is uh, the same other point equation as a Gaussian unitary ensemble. Uh, and in fact, uh, one could see with this change of variables, one has the van der Monde here, one has a, uh, a Gaussian factor here in the, exp in the exponent. But uh, the fact is that. Uh, here we are in a discrete case, and we have to take this into account. So we have uh, a further constraint, which, uh, which contains the information about the difference from a continuous and a discrete ensemble. So uh, we have to impose the fact that this is discrete, so the eigenvalues cannot be arbitrarily close, because we have finite and discrete uh, number of sides. So this can be uh, formulated into this condition. So the row of h must be less or equal than 1. And this will play an important role. This is the constraint on the, on the eigenvalue density. OK. So now we have to solve the saddle point equation before. We don't have an explicit solution if we look at this. But we can solve it uh, perturbatively in the, in the strength of the deformation, so in this parameter tau. OK. At order 0 in tau, we already know the solution from the 93. This is Douglas Kasakov. And we, we, have that, uh, we know that there is a phase transition. So there are two, uh, two phases. Uh, we start with the analysis of with coupling, because it's the simplest case. And uh, the solution is given by the Wigner semicircle law. So in, at weak coupling, the solution is the same as the uh, continuum, continuous uh, ensemble. OK, so now we can use the, the, the solution found by Douglas and Kazakov to uh, obtain the solution at first order in tau. But if we go back, we see that the, the other contribution does not depend on the eigenvalue h, are just numbers. So essentially, it is the, sorry, the second moment of the eigenvalue density minus 1 over 12. So it is very simple. We can calculate it and, so, and plug it in in the first, uh, uh, in the first order approximation. But uh, so what we see is that th these are just numbers. It's something which is completely known. And this does not uh, include any uh, dependence on the eigenvalues. So uh, what you obtain is that the first order uh, approximation is exactly the same one times a certain factor. OK, so we have the same structure of the equation, but with the area parameter renormalized by this uh, zero, by this first order correction. So we can calculate this correction, and we obtain this formula. We have this uh, B1, uh, 1 because it's first order. And so we obtain the same equation again. 
and we can solve it uh, at first order. We re and so we can go on uh, perturbatively at any order in this way. So we can iterate the procedure. Of course, the contribution is always uh, independent of the of the eigenvalues. So we are just we just get a normalization of the area parameter, and we arrive that at order k we know exactly how this uh, effect is. So we have a recursive formula for this b case. So uh, also uh, we see that this uh, this objects converge, and we we can find the limit, and we can. Uh, we can solve this until uh, the b infinity. So we, we are not doing perturbation theory anymore because we can calculate all the contributions. So one finds an equation for b infinity. Uh, this equation uh, can be recast in a cubic form, but it's not cubic. So one finds three solutions, but only one uh, really solves the original equation. So one has two spurious solution, but one is the, is the right one, and it's very easy to identify because it's the unique, which gives the correct value when we turn off the TT bar deformation. So we finally arrived to this uh, formula, which is unique for the B infinity. And it, of course, depends on the area itself and on tau. But OK. Uh, we have to be very careful now because, as I said before, there, must, there is a singularity in the, in the deformed uh, Casimir. So uh, we have to be careful, and we have to uh, consider this, uh, this fact. Also, once is that the BK, I said that the BK series, uh, the, the sequence converge, but this converges to the B infinity only uh, under certain assumptions, and those assumptions are exactly the same for which the deformed Casimir is well defined. So uh, we, we have to study, uh, we have to translate this condition into formulae, and we find that this means that uh, the area uh, parameter must be bound from below. So we have to introduce a lower bound <laughs> for this area, and we cannot go uh, lower than this value. However, uh, OK, we, we have the formula for how this uh, bound is obtained, and this will be, uh, in general, a function of, uh, of tau. However, if we plug the explicit expression for uh, B infinity into this uh, condition, one finds exactly that the lower bound is zero. And as it was a bit surprising for me at the beginning, because this means that the TT bar deformation does not reduce the, uh, the, the available parameter space. So uh, it, the, the values for the area which, uh, for which the theory is uh, well defined are the same in the TT deformed case than in the undeformed one. OK. So also, uh, we are doing this calculation in the weak coupling phase of Douglas and Kazakov, uh, which is sent until the critical point uh, p squared, because when the area is bigger than this value, this condition is not fulfilled. So uh, this does not hold anymore. In, we, have, we are in a deformed case, so there will be uh, some different uh, critical value, which, which we know how to find. So we just have to plug the B infinity uh, expression in this equation, and we find the critical value of A. And one finds this solution, which is uh, quadratic in tau, but uh, this solution only holds for a certain value of tau. And at the value of tau for which this becomes 0, there, are, there, is, there isn't any other positive solution for tau bigger than 1. So essentially, our solution uh, for any fixed tau smaller than this value is this one, but for uh, very large, uh, for some large values of tau, we don't have any solution at weak coupling. Okay, so if we don't have solution at weak coupling, we have to go to strong coupling and find uh, the solution in a different way, in order to uh, fulfill the uh, the bound the bounded uh, condition on the eigenvalue density. Uh, again, we follow the ideas of uh, Douglas and Kazakov. And uh, we uh, try with a two-cut solution. So it will be shaped like that. So we have some function phi here. And then it's identically one in uh, some region. So it saturates the, the condition. OK, so we now want to find which is this function phi. And uh, we again follow standard techniques from uh, matrix models. So we define the resolvent in this, which is a complex function, which is uh, defined on the, on the cut, but it's well defined in all the complex plane. 
and uh, so the, we translate the uh, subject point equation into a, a, integral, a singular integral equation for the resolvent. And again, we use the same strategy uh, to expand uh, the, the form of Casimir and geometric series and we solve it perturbatively. So uh, at zero order is, uh, again, the solution found by Douglas Kasakov, and we use uh, standard techniques. These are just uh, two uh, nice reviews of the how to solve large gen uh, Hermitian matrix models, and I found they are very interesting and very well explained. And okay, so one finds an, a solution for the resolvent. Um, okay, maybe, I don't know if I have time. So, well, this is the solution. One can obtain this by uh, contour deformation in the complex plane. So, for example, one could. So for example, uh, we can uh, use uh, contour integration of this on this contour. So uh, because the omega is ill-defined here, but we can find solution by uh, standard contour deformation. We start, for example, with this contour C, we send it to infinity, we pick up the poles of the integrand, and we obtain this uh, expression. So it's very standard manipulations. OK, so, and of course, if we know the, the resolvent, we can retrieve, uh, recover the eigenvalue density. So, uh, of course, we know, if we know the large, um, the large um, value of the, of the, the like behavior of the resolvent when uh, the z, z become large, we can find the moments and we can plug it into the, uh, the subject point equation and yeah, replicate this procedure uh, perturbatively as we did before. So, uh, we, at each order k in tau, we arrive to the same uh, subject point equation but with some renormalized area, which is now is called, uh, we had the renormalizing is dk because it's of course different from before. But the idea uh, is the same as with, as, as with coupling. Only the calculations are more difficult, but the idea is the same. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have an explicit analytic expression for this uh, d infinity, but at least uh, we can uh, find an approximate solution close to the critical point which is really where we are interested in, in, the, in, because we want to study the phase transition, so we're really interested in the local behavior close to this point. So we have this, uh, we can find this approximate uh, solution, and it says that uh, d infinity is equal to uh, b infinity up to the first derivative, and, uh, but the second derivative are different at, uh, eval when evaluated at the critical point. Uh, now we can study the free energy of the model. So we study the critical point and we find that uh, this formula, when evaluated from the uh, small coupling and uh, strong coupling phase, and okay, the dots means are terms which are explicitly proportional uh, to this. So they already are zero at the critical point, but also the first term is zero because of what we said before. So at the critical point, d infinity and b infinity are equal. So uh, this is zero. Okay, so we can go further and take a second derivative of the free energy with respect to the area, and we arrive to this expression. Again, the dots are something which is explicitly vanish, vanish and the, at the critical point, and we have this expression with the d infinity uh, and b infinity and their first derivatives, but again, as we said before, they are equal uh, at the critical point, so again, this expression vanishes. However, if we take a fourth derivative, we have second derivative of b infinity and d infinity, and they start to be different, so uh, the phase transition is a third order. So uh, this is the same result uh, Douglas and Kasakov obtained, so essentially uh, the TT bar deformation does not uh, affect the order of phase transition. So it's a bit surprising, maybe. So I will just uh, go uh, fast on this uh, instanton analysis, uh, because, okay, uh, we have said that uh, two-dimensional Young means on a Riemann surface localizes onto uh, classical solution, and uh, okay, 
instantons for me mean a classical solution to the Yang-Mills equation. Since we are on S2, uh, we are, uh, know explicitly how to construct this uh, solution. So uh, solutions are flat connections. So we have So we are in two dimensions. So uh, classical solution to the Young Mills equation are uh, flat connections. So we have So, of course, uh, we are interested in uh, gauge equivalent classes. Of course, solutions which are connected by gauge transformation are the same for me. So, okay. But since we are on S2, we know how to characterize this. And these are in one-to-one uh, -one correspondence with a collection of uh, monopole charges. So, we specify an instanton by a collection of, of n integer uh, values. However, uh, the, the model has a uh, weight symmetry, so we are not really interested on in the form of this vector, but only on how many times the values appear. So we can uh, reorder it and it is the same. So we are really interested in in the multiplicities, uh, how many times the eigenvalue L appears, and of course we have the constraint So, okay, uh, now uh, fixing an instanton corresponds to fix these multiplicities. So essentially study the theory for at, in, in an instanton sector instead of uh, in the flat connection sector corresponds to uh, a symmetry breaking pattern of this form. So uh, any instanton section corresponds to a non-trivial background, which corresponds to this symmetry breaking pattern. OK. So uh, we now know explicitly how this instanton uh, contributes to the partition function. And uh, OK, this, was, uh, this is the result obtained. And we have this, actually, the, the, the action evaluated that this instanton contribution is uh, Gaussian. Uh, and this goes with the inverse coupling. So it goes one, one over A. And we also see that this is exponentially suppressed as n becomes large. And we have this, uh, the weight of the instantons, uh, which is very hard to calculate in the general case, but it can be computed by Poisson resummation in this, uh, in this case, because as we said before, this is the discrete uh, Gaussian ensemble, so it is uh, kind of tractable. And it was computed by Minahan and Polychronacos in the 93. So we have expression for this uh, instanton weight. OK, but these are exponentially suppressed. So, and we can uh, uh, gross and uh, study this uh, contribution. And explicitly, they construct the, how, this, how su suppressed are those instantons for the first case. So the, the instanton with uh, less energy, the first excitation. Uh, so it is suppressed in this way, where gamma there is this function. And we see that this uh, a function of the area over uh, the critical value. And in particular, uh, when uh, this value uh, a over p squared is greater than one, this becomes imaginary. So there, is, there isn't any suppression anymore. So this is why a phase transition occurs in the original model. Because uh, when the area reaches this, uh, this value, this critical value, instantons are not suppressed. And so they become relevant. And we have, the, we have to take into account the instanton contributions. So OK, this is the result by Grosser and Matitzin. And uh, what we did is to study uh, the same, but in the TT bar deformed case, uh, Poisson resummation is, uh, is not feasible in this case, but we, again, can focus on one instanton sector, the, the easiest to reach, the one with less energy. And we can, uh, again, since we are considering only one uh, instanton, we can use the eigenvalue density at large n to integrate out n minus one eigenvalues and obtain uh, the saddle point for the, for this modified, uh, for the only one whose uh, equation of motion is modified. So again, we obtain uh, this expression, which is similar to the one by Gross and Matheson, but we have the renormalized area in our case. 
So in the TT part deformation, the procedure goes in the same uh, way, but with this renormalized area parameter, uh, where of course the B infinity depends on uh, tau. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, we found that this is suppressed, but there is no suppression at all when tau uh, is bigger than the critical value. So we now understand why uh, there, is, there is no uh, weak coupling phase for tau bigger this one, the, uh, to this value. This is exactly when the instantors are not suppressed for any value of the area. Okay, so there are some plots here, and we see that the, the blue line is the TT deformed case, and the orange is, is the original case, the one by Gross and Matitzin. And so we see that our case is always a bit uh, uh, is down, it's, uh, so it's, the suppression factor is, uh, is weaker. So this is the case as now uh, 0 0.1, and we see that at 0.5 it's already much bigger. So this is the suppression factor. So this has less suppressed, so they are more relevant. OK. So I'm almost done. I'll just uh, recall the, the results and just make the point. So we know that uh, from Douglas and Kasakov, we know that young Mills on the two sphere undergoes a phase transition. And we have the same result uh, in the case of TT uh, bar deformed version, but with an asterisk here. Also, uh, the phase transition is induced by instanton, and the same holds, and the same is true in our uh, TT bar deform uh, case. And also, the, the fact that the theory is well defined for all values, uh, positive values of the area, is also true in this case, because the, we have said that the TT bar deformation does not reduce this, uh, this area, uh, this, this parameter space. But we have asterisk there, because this uh, assertion is true only for certain values of tau, and after a certain uh, critical value uh, of the uh, strength of the deformation, uh, there is only one phase, which is the strong coupling phase, because the instantors are not suppressed at, for any value of the area when tau is large. So here I finish the presentation. Thank you.